You see, the next part of the experiment will be such that we ionize this oil drop. How would we ionize? We employ a X-ray generator here. What this X-ray generator will do, it will generate X-rays. X-rays are high energy radiations. Now, when those high energy radiations are going to fall on this oil drop, they're going to be a collisions, many, many collisions. Boom, 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 boom. It will be bombarded by X-rays. During that bombardment, there's a chance that an electron will be expelled out of this oil drop and this oil drop will acquire some charge. Now from the cathode ray tube experiment, you know that the electrons used to come out of the air molecule. Now the method to ionize the air was different. The method there was to create a very high voltage electric field in the cathode ray experiment, if you remember. But here, the method is different. He used an X-ray generator because the idea was he knew, he knew from the prior experiment that the electrons are fundamental particles as it is constituted by all the particles. Now even oil drops will have some electrons. Now only thing is you have to eject that electron out and he intuitively felt by via collision it can be done. So he used X-ray for the collision with oil drops for the oil drops to get ionized. Now, once the oil drop is ionized, then it can experience electric force. Electric force can be experienced only by charged particles. Now, once it is charged, then you can introduce a new force on this oil drop, apart from the force we have already been discussing, which is will be equal to electric force. Now, for electric force, you require electric field. Now, for electric field, you require some voltage. Now, suppose this is a DC voltage source, this is the positive terminal of the battery connected with the lower plate and the negative terminal of the battery connected with the upper plate. And this is a variable voltage source. That means you can change the value from 1 kilovolt, 2 kilovolt, 3 kilovolt to 10 kilovolt, whatever, in whatever range you can change the value. So the direction of electric field will be from positive plate towards negative plate. So the direction of electric field has to be upward. Okay, now see what happens. Previously, we have discussed that the oil drop will be coming down with a terminal velocity, with a constant velocity due to drag force. Now, suppose this oil drop is coming with a constant velocity. Now, suddenly, due to the collision with X-ray, it got, got ionized. Now, when it got ionized, suddenly a new force will start to appear. That force will be electric force. Now, what would happen? A body was coming down with a constant velocity. Suddenly, there is a net force. If there is a net force, then there will be an acceleration. So the velocity, there will be acceleration in upward direction. So the downward velocity will keep on, keep on decreasing, 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 decreasing. It will come to zero. The moment it comes to zero, if at that moment, if electric force becomes equal to the other forces which are already acting, then the oil drop will be suspended in the air at that very position. And suppose, suppose we are able to do that. If we are able to do that, then the electric force must be equal to the force which are acting on the oil drop. And the force which will be acting on the oil drop will be mg minus fb. Because if the velocity is zero, then the drag force will be zero. Remember, drag force is proportional to velocity. So when it is suspended in the air, there is no drag force. If there is no drag force, it is only gravitational force minus buoyant force. Okay, and that should be equal to electric force electric force. Now, since I have told you this is a variable voltage source, so varying the voltage, you can bring the voltage to such a value, an electric field hence to such a value that electric force becomes equal to Fg minus Fb and the ball is suspended in the air. If you are able to do that, then electric force, which is equal to Q into E will be equal to Fg minus Fb and Fg minus Fb have been calculated before is equal to 6 pi eta R into V1. This value you have already calculated and this Q into E. E is voltage upon distance between the plate. This is a very basic formula of electrostats. Right side is known to you. This voltage you would know how much voltage you are applying. The distance between the plate you can physically measure. The only unknown here is Q. And Q can be calculated from this equation given everything else is known. And you can see there is no mass involved here. There is no mass. So charge can be calculated independently of mass. And hence charge was calculated by Millikan. And you can make a table for voltage and charge, voltage corresponding to the charge. And you can get different value of charge for different value of voltage. 
See, charge can be different as you would understand an oil drop can lose many electrons. When X-rays bombard it, a oil drop, then it can lose many electrons. If it loses one electron, there would be one unit of charge. It can lose two, three, four. So during the course of experiment, depending on the oil drop which you have chosen and depending on how many electrons it has lost, the value of charge would come out different. So you have to repeat the experiment many, many times to make a long chart of different value of charges that can be possible. All the possible values. You have to repeat it multiple number of times. And he did it and he made a chart. But before we go into the reading of the chart, I'll tell you one thing. Actually, this is not the most probable case that the oil drop will be suspended in the air. Because for this to happen, this force has to be exactly equal to Fg minus Fb. And that is a very difficult task. You know, you are, you are varying the voltage and you come to such a value that electric force becomes exactly equal to Fg minus Fb. You will be singularly lucky if you are able to do that. That won't happen practically. What is practical, that electric force will be little greater than Fg minus Fb. You can make the force greater by certain amount that is easy to do but to equate it to make it exactly equal is a very difficult task so what is more probable is electric force is little bit greater than fg minus fb if that happens then what would happen there will be a net upward force fine if there's a net upward force then this ball will start moving up when it is it starts to acquire velocity then drag force will again come into picture Fine. So as the velocity keeps on increasing, drag force also keeps on increasing and a time will come very soon when the drag force will become such that it is able to balance the difference of electric force and the downward force. And again the net force will be zero. And again the ball will start to move with a constant velocity. And again it will acquire a terminal velocity. So what would happen is, there's an electric force upward and Fg minus Fb is downward and also drag force is downward and again the body is moving with constant velocity. If the body is again moving with constant velocity then again the net force will be zero. Fine. If the net force is zero then you can equate the upward and downward forces. So Q into E will be equal to the drag force. Suppose the velocity this time is V2 then the drag force will be equal to 6 pi eta r into v2 and fg minus fb is not going to change i have told you before it will remain 6 pi eta r into v1 so again you can write side right hand side is known as you found out v1 from physical measurement similarly you will have to find v2 from physical measurement so right hand side will be known and this r will be same as this r Fine, because the radius of all the oil drops will be the same. The atomizers should be such that it creates the droplets with the same radius. And again, E can be written as V by D. D is known, V is known, Q have to be known from this particular equation. And you do the same thing. You repeat the experiment multiple number of times and you find all the possible values of charges that you get from this experiment. And what happened was, the value of charge came to be such like this 160 zeptocoulomb or 320 zeptocoulomb or 480 zeptocoulomb or 640 zeptocoulomb or 800 zeptocoulomb and uh, the observation was remarkable remarkable actually it was very important for the discovery of the structure of an atom because you see if you look at this data you will see a pattern the pattern is all the numbers are multiple of 160. You don't get a value less than 160. You don't get a value in a fractional multiple of 160. It is always an integral multiple of 160. Now you will be bound to draw a conclusion that the minimum amount of charge is 160 because you have repeated it so many times and you are not getting a value 80 or 40. So that means the minimum charge that a particle can carry is 160 zeptocoulomb or 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 kilo and you also draw the conclusion that the charge that a body can have will always be an integral multiple of 160 zeptocoulomb or a charge on an electron or a charge on a body will always be equal to plus minus n into e 
n is an integer and e is a charge on electron so this was a remarkable thing and this is how the charge on the electron was found out and using e by m ratio mass was calculated e by m ratio was known e by m, m ratio was i told you before was of the order of 10 raised to the power 11 and it was exactly equal to 1.76 into 10 raised to the power 11 from here using this value of e you can find out the value of m m will come out as 9.1 into 10 raised to the power minus 31 kg you have to remember these values as long as you don't get a job one more conclusion that you can draw from this data is electron from this experiment from this experiment you, you tend to believe that electrons have particle nature because you see there's one particle of electron 160 septicoulomb and the next higher value is 320 there's nothing in between so you can't cut down the electron from one and half electron 1.5 electron one electron after that you directly get two electron and then three electron then four electron there's no continuous supply of electron as you have in case of wave it's particle one two three discrete values so it also signifies the particle nature of electron